Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome! Today we're going to be learning how to create the login system for this project. To do this we're going to be using unitywebrequest.post. With this we basically can submit information to our PHP script and then our PHP file in the server can check if our username and passwords are correct so that we can access specific data that belongs to our user. Before we begin, I want to deeply thank all of my subscribers, and especially those who support me on Patreon. Thank you so much! Now, let's begin with the video. We're going to start by creating a PHP file that is going to be very similar to the getusers.php file that we created. So we're going to copy all this script and just paste it back here in our login.php file, which is also going to be stored in our XM folder. And we're going to use this file because we actually want to log in into our database again. We want to create the connection. And then instead of selecting all the users, we are first going to compare the user and the password that were provided by our client or our user. So here I'm going to create two new variables. I'm going to call this variable submitted by user. And we have to be careful not to confuse username for the database and the password for the database and the user and password for our game. So here we're going to create, I'm going to name it a little bit different. So I'm going to call it something like login user and login password or just login pass. So there, same length. So now how are we going to get the data from our Unity application? Well, we're going to use something called a post variable. I think it's called post variable. Let's call it just that. And we define it like this and we need a name for our field. I'm going to call it the same as the variable to avoid any confusion. So I'm going to call it the field here, what is inside these two square brackets, login user. And we're going to do the same for the login password. So with this, we can actually submit information into these two fields so that they are going to be passed to the PHP file and these variables are going to take up that value. So now that we have these two values that are submitted by the user, we can actually use them in our query where we select the username and the level from our users. Now we just want to select the password where a username is equal to the username that was submitted by the user. I hope that makes sense. Otherwise, let's try to follow along. So we're not going to select the username this time. We're just going to select the password because we want to compare the password from the table users and where username username is actually uh, not this one, but the username in our database. And that username needs to be equals to the login username. And to do that, we can actually, we need to, I think we need to do some concatenation. So I will end my quotes there and I will use a dot to concatenate. And I'm going to pass the variable called login user. So get me the password from the tables user where the username in that table, so inside our database, is equal to the user that was submitted by our Unity application. And it should give us, if that user exists, it should give us a, a password. And, and that password we can compare then with this login pass. And that's what we're going to do inside here. So this should probably only happen once if our usernames are unique, uh, you have to you have to be sure how you're going to design this if your usernames are going to be repeatable and you will have unique passwords or if you're going to have unique usernames and then they can have any password they want. So instead of echoing all this, we're just going to do a if statement and if row password equals, oh, and here, sorry, in the SQL here, the query, we don't use a double equal sign, we just use equal. That's how query language is made. But here in our if, in, uh, from our PHP file, here in this if statement, we need to do double equal sign. So if 
row password is equals to the login pass then we have a success as this <laughs> then we have succeeded so we can echo login success or something like that and else we can say something like wrong credentials and here else we could tell the user that username does not exist and that's what we need to do for our PHP file now we have to go to unity and in our web file where we have our get date and our get users function we're going to create our login function so as I said at the beginning we're going to be using uh, the unity web request dot post to do this so I'm just going to copy this enumerator function from the example I'm going to leave the link in the description if you want to copy it as well and just paste it here we're going to change the name of this routine to a let's call it login and we need to get two parameters so two strings one is username and the other one is password So now, in this form, first let's change the URL. Uh, the URL should be the same that we're using in our get users, but instead of being get users.php, of course it's login.php. So we change that. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You, you guys tell me if it's too small or not in the comments so that in next videos I can make a better size. So login.php and we need to set the data that we want to set. Here you see this is the field that I was talking about. So if we go back to the PHP file, this is the field of the post form. So we have a login user and a login pass fields. So we want to type that here, login user. And what data are we going to be submitting to this field here is what we put on the second parameter of this form.addField function that data is the username right here so we're going to delete that paste that and we're going to do the exact same thing but for our password that there and change this to login pass just make sure that these two are the same yes they are all right so now this is going to submit the information to this php file through a post so we don't want to debug just the form upload complete we want to actually debug whatever is returned on this php file which should be login success wrong credentials or the username does not exist so let's go back to unity here and let's change this to debug uh, just like what we did here debug.download handler.txt we're going to paste that and great now we need to call this from the start so start call routine and we're going to oh yeah it's login and we're going to provide a password and a username here so if i remember correctly our username in the database was test user and i think the password was one two three four five six so now with this, we can actually go to Unity, the editor here, uh, make sure everything is on the scene. Okay, we can play this. And I think I haven't started exam, so we should have, yeah, cannot connect to destination host. So I need to turn on exam. And remember guys, you can set the option so that it starts the, these two services automatically and also that XM starts automatically when you turn on your computer. I just don't do it because I don't know why, but I just don't do it. And um, I'm going to play this and now connect it successfully. Now we will show the users. Let me read that message. Trying to get property number of rows of non-object in 
here PHP on line 26. So we actually have a problem with our login PHP script. So let's go check it what is going on here on not there in login. So 26. If result is greater than number of rows, let me see what's going on. Okay, guys, I found the error. I'm going to try to explain it first before I change it. So if this was just a query, like a normal string, we would have something like this. If where username equals, let's say something like Lucas. And it, apparently we need to encapsulate this with single quotes. All right. So for our login user variable, we also need to add that. So we're just going to add it before this quote. And then we're going to concatenate a new pair of double quotes and add a single quote in between those two. So now if we try this one more time, we should get our message connect successfully. Now we show the users and then here, where is it? Oh, here in the first one. Sorry guys. Uh, login success here. So I, I'm going to clear up this a little bit. So let's remove this. So we have a login success. Now let's change the password that we provide from unity and see if we get a wrong credentials message. So here, we're going to change this to test user two. I think that that was another user that we created as a test user now connected successfully. But here in the second message, we get wrong credentials and that's because it found the user, but the password did not match the user password on the database. Now let's try to change this to test user three, which I think does not exist in our database. And now we should get a, error message or not an error message, but just a message saying that the username does not exist. So now that we actually have a login success, here is where we want to get the data of our user. So get users data here so that we can actually make sure that indeed this is our user and it have the privileges to access that data. We could get player info get um, get inventory and also something very important is uh, modify player data. So for example, if we level up or if we sell an item or buy a new item, we need to update our inventory accordingly here. So these are all things that we can do, but we need to make sure that our user actually locked in uh, so that we prevent someone from altering other people's accounts. But we're going to do all of this in future episodes when we actually have our inventory and all the data in our database. Right now, our database is pretty empty. We're also going to talk in the future about user tokens for login because this this way of logging in is actually uh, very basic where every time you need to get data, you need to submit the password and the username, which we can store in a variable in our unity application, for example. So every time we need to do this checking where we could use a user token and hopefully we're going to do a video about using user tokens. But I think for simple games, this way is good enough and it will give you the basic functionality that you need to run a game with a database and a backend. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. On the next two videos, we're going to be learning how to do the registration of new users. And we're also going to be making a login interface where we can type our username and our password. We can ask the client to remember our username and password information. We can also register a new user there. So please, guys, Stay tuned, remember to like this video, subscribe, it really helps me a lot, and I will see you all on the next one. Goodbye. Psh.